The Women's Executive Network has released its list of Canada's most powerful women, and Kim Thompson is on that list. She's the Senior Vice President of Advisory Services at Credential Financial and joins us here in Studio 10 this morning. Hello there. Hello. Good morning. Congratulations. (laughs) Thank you very much. (laughs) How does it feel to be listed as one of Canada's most powerful women? (laughs) It's a... it's quite an honor. I, uh, I have to tell you, it's probably not um, not something your husband wants to hear when you go home. And uh, <laughs> it's probably something he's known for quite some time. Well, <laughs> but not wanting to admit it. Is there what you I go. Say. Yeah. See. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's a it's a phenomenal honor, Rick. And um, I I can't tell you uh, when I woke up this morning. It's uh, and to see the list of women, quite frankly, that I've uh, that I get to represent alongside with myself it's uh, it's it's quite something and hats off to WXN for making this happen for a lot of us the theme of this year's awards is titled what glass ceiling but a recent poll suggests that women make up less than one fifth of senior management roles in this country so the glass ceiling is it still there the glass ceiling, uh, it, it is still there. I would say that um, certainly my perspective has been uh, throughout my career is to uh, is to own your own career. Uh, step forward, lean in, and take a perspective that it's your roadmap. The glass ceiling, I would suggest that it's going to uh, – it, it's taking time. Uh, when you look back over generations where we've come from, we, uh, women in general, we've made huge strides. Uh, there's, uh, there's other factors at play that, uh, come into how we manage our careers. Um, and, uh, and I would say that, uh, that we're making a lot of breakthroughs. We're making strides and, uh, just give us a little more time. Why has it taken so long? I would say it's t- it's taking a little bit longer because uh, you need to sit back and allow yourself that time. Um, certainly as a woman, I've been in the profession for over 25 years. I myself have taken pauses in my career to uh, allow myself to have it all at different times of my career. And, uh, but then also allowed myself to evaluate that it was time to come back into the, into the uh, workforce and, uh, and step forward and, uh, and, and continue with my career. And I, and I do think that that, that whole evolution is, is just going to take us a little bit more time than, uh, than otherwise. We do see positive change now, though. Look no further than how many premiers in this country are female, which it wasn't very long ago. It was a novelty if there was somebody even in in cabinet who was female. Uh, does that give young women now encouragement that they can have it all? I think to the extent that groups like WXN creates the opportunity for younger women to see role models and that, yes, women can have it all, but one of the things, Rick, I'm very passionate about is – Women affording themselves the opportunity and the competence to reassess and reevaluate what having it all means. Um, what did uh, it mean to you? Uh, well, five, six years ago, having it all for me meant that I stayed at home with my children full time. Prior to that, I, my career was full on. Um, right now, having it all means that uh, I'm in a very fulfilling career. Uh, my husband stays at home full time with the children, um, and for me right now, I I have it all. But that's changed for me uh, throughout my career, and uh, and I feel comfortable enough in my abilities and my roadmap to whatever's deemed success that I can evaluate and um, and determine what having it all means for me at that point in time. How important are life partners? I personally think life partners are extremely important um, because it is um, it's to have the the family balance that's uh, that and that's a very individual perspective on what that looks like. But having a partner at home that supports uh, you and your career and vice versa them in their careers, if that's the path that works for you, I think that that's extremely extremely important and I would suggest at times underestimated. Absolutely. How difficult is it to change entrenched corporate culture, though, now? Because it's still male-dominated. There's an assumption there still that the CEO is going to be a man. Uh, so how difficult is it from inside 
for you to put your foot down and say, no, damn it, I want to be the CEO? Well, I, th- I think we are, again, I think we're making strides. I, uh, I'm i a little bit reserved, and I think um, while I appreciate uh, the initiatives that are taking place, in, uh, and we've all heard of them, mandating a number of women on boards, mandating or looking at do we have gender diversity, I think those are all good things to do. My uh, yellow flag, if you will, is that those shouldn't just be a checkbox. Um, don't suggest that just because you have checked the box and now you have 50% women on your board and 50% men that you are now deemed uh, gender diverse. I do think that there's a tone at the top that's extremely important for organizations to understand and to evaluate whether that tone at the top supports um, some of the um, differences, if you will, that women bring to the table versus men, some of the life-work balances that we all require, irrespective of whether you're a mother or a father, that uh, that need to be taken into account to promote a healthy workplace. Congratulations once again. And you are a role model to a lot of younger women. Thank you very much. It's our pleasure. Thanks for coming in. Kim Thompson, Senior Vice President of Advisory Services at Credential Financial, been named to Canada's list of the most powerful women in the country. The Women's Executive Network presents the awards in Toronto.